Yeah, well, you guys all know me. I'm Julie's older sister. I'm the shy one. Uh, <laughs> Sally and Nicola, I saw your nerves, and I've had them all day. I'm usually, like, not scared of talking, but for some reason, like, this is such a big deal, and I've been nervous. I even have my notes, and I don't take notes. So, <laughs> Um, I just want to say I'm really happy to be here today and standing next to my sister on a beach in the wind watching the one guy that stuck around say I do to her. So thank you, Alex. <laughs> well, this isn't her seventh wedding. I mean, what do you guys people expect? It's her first husband, and we're very happy to welcome you to our family, Alex. So, so, as many of you guys have noticed, Julie and I are sisters, but we are very, very different. I don't know if it's apparent or not, but, um, you know, I was never really one to think things through, where Julie is a planner. If Julie wants breakfast in the morning, Julie makes her day about getting that breakfast. I wake up and I need food, I find food. So, I'm more of a scavenger rather than a planner. So if you had to guess which one of us OD'd as a child, which one would you think? Yeah, it was Julie on Flintstone Vitamins. Had to get her stomach pumped, and I got to swim an extra three hours in Heather's pool because my parents had to take her to the emergency room. So thank you. <laughs> when Julie was a child, her and Laura became safety kids. Safety kid one and two. They actually played to be safe and how to make playing safer. I, as an adult, have a skateboard helmet that I wear when I drink and play flippy cup. <laughs> and it's kept my head safe on a few occasions. <laughs> so Julie is the youngest of the three of us. Her and I are five years apart, but our birthdays are two days apart. So um, we didn't necessarily grow up living and going through the same things. I was a teenager and she thought I was crazy. And my mom also thought I was crazy and kept a good eye on me. So crazy that my mom at a softball game left Julie in a tree playing with her friends to get me in the car. And we had to go back to the park district and get Julie because she was forgotten in a tree. <laughs> so she did experience a little bit of a third child, forgotten kid, whatever syndrome. <laughs> But when I, what, Julie was 18 and I was about 22, I, Tyler was three at the time. Julie was going away to college and I decided I'm going to finish my degree full time and I'm going to go to college too. Me and Tyler, we're all ready to go to college and Julie goes, excuse me, there's only one Rybar chick per state school. Bernie's at SIU, I'm at ISU, pick your own school. So I didn't get to go to college with Julie. <laughs> so from one husky to another, I would like to provide you with Julie's Techno Mix. <laughs> For Sarah, ISU rocks and NIU sucks. <laughs> I hope you have something to play that in. <laughs> Yeah, they, you can't make that shit up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> One of the best things, though, about me having Tyler, Julie going away to college, was that I settled down and Julie loosened up. And that's kind of when I was actually able to make my sister one of my best friends. So... Because I'm her best friend and her sister, I am responsible for everything you see today. Because the first two ladies that were here, Julie met, moved to Hawaii because of me. <laughs> my husband's best friend was, standing, uh, was having his wedding in Hawaii, and I told my husband, I was like, it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. We're never going to get to go to Hawaii again. We need to bring Tyler. He's nine. And he's like, no, we're drinking with our friends. We're not going to be the only ones with a kid having to lug him around. Well, let's bring my sister, and she can nanny. And he said, okay, fine. Well, that one wedding became, after you guys announced you were getting married here, the most expensive decision he ever made. Because then, after that wedding, once in a lifetime, I went to Hawaii for four years in a row to celebrate our birthdays. And now I'm here. 
<laughs> and it's not like it's getting cheaper as it goes. So I don't know what's going on. <laughs> um, but let me see, hold on. So unlike the movies, Julie did not meet Prince Charming in Hawaii. It was quite the opposite. She actually found relaxation on Sundays painting pottery. And you know what her club was called? Her and Sally, the Bitter Woman's Pottery Group. They basically painted pottery and bitched about men all day long and how relationships sucks and nobody would love them. <laughs> so this is a good turnaround. I'm very proud of you. <laughs> so going back to the three-month rule, that's exactly true. Julie, I'm not dating anybody for three months. I'm going to get myself established, find a new job. You know, i got to live at my parents' house. I would like to move out, you know, with, make it really temporary. Hey, Julie, you want to come to our 4th of July party? Yeah, okay. And there's Julie. So, oh, you know that guy over there? Yeah. Yeah, him, the one in the CrossFit group? Yeah. <laughs> and that's kind of how it all began. So, yes, I am responsible for everything. You're welcome. <laughs> but how could Alex not fall in love with Julie? How could any of you not love Julie? Julie is one of the smartest, nicest most independent women you will ever meet. She's independent but dependent at the same time. A good balance. Sometimes a little needy, but she's got emotions and she needs to talk about them. And because her feelings are important and she doesn't want to keep them inside. But Alex is a great guy and he kind of listens to her, so that's good. <laughs> but if you look around this room, we've all traveled so far from the people that you saw standing next to Julie. We have one from Hawaii, we have three, what, two or three from California, we have Iowa, we have Chicago, uh, we have Michigan. You don't see that very often at a regular wedding, let alone going, I'm not good at math, I think we're all like a thousand miles away from home. <laughs> you never see that. So, Alex, I am so happy you found Julie, or that you like accepted her, or whatever, you made her one of your own. Um, you are her alpha. You are everything she could ever want. You are such a perfect yin-yang balance with her that it's actually kind of sick. And <laughs> it it kind of is. But um, when it's all said and done, though, I am so happy to welcome you into our family, to have another brother. And um, I wish you guys nothing but happiness. And um, if anything, if you ever wake up in the morning or, you know, you know, there's an envelope on your bed, and you have a thinking manual. Because sometimes, Sarah, our wonderful big sister, because sometimes you forget to put your helmet on. Julie's going to, this is from Julie, by the way. She might write you little notes on how to improve yourself. A guide to thinking clearly and responsibly. <laughs> Step one, think. Uh, my brother helped with this, too, so watch out. You get gang-banged on these things. Consider reality. <laughs> Step three, ask yourself, will this decision harm anyone physically? <laughs> Step four, will consuming alcohol positively affect this decision-making process? <laughs> Step five, ask yourself, does anything I am thinking about right now make any sense at all? Step six, reread and reconsider steps one through five. <laughs> step seven, if any of the steps one through six turned out unsuccessful, avoid this thought completely. <laughs> this is just one thought I got this on. <laughs> step eight, what were you thinking about again? We love you. <laughs> Alex, welcome to the family, and I, I look forward to reading these with you. <laughs> and thank you, everybody, for coming as well.